Welcome to another Demarcation Media Mega Constructs review. We've got a very exciting video today because here in front of me I have the Halo Infinite Chopper Takedown set. We have two figures in here, both of which are very important. We have Spartan Fred and then Escherum. Is that how you pronounce his name? I think that's how you pronounce his name. Um, he was the big bad brute we saw in the Halo Infinite gameplay trailer. Um, so I'm very excited to get this open, but real quick, let's take a look at the box. Pretty standard for the Halo Infinite line so far. Halo Infinite branding, we got the two-in-one, which actually looks kind of interesting. I'm looking forward to building that. Got the action shot going on. We see our two characters up top. Stuff on the side. Our characters on the side again. And then we get a better look at the alternate build. Looks like the chopper's wheel turns. Uh, we got the escape helmet and the wasp down there. And then we've got the names for our characters. Now, the interesting thing about this box is they look like they've upgraded it. And yeah, let me go ahead and we'll start opening it and you'll see what I mean. Most of the other Halo Infinite set boxes were just a box, like a normal box. But this, if I am correct here, looks a little different because, ah yes, look at this. Wow, that has a very premium feel to it. Look at that. Nice, okay, I like that a lot. Dang. So then we can just kind of lift everything out. And voila, the box is completely undamaged. And not only that, you can reseal it. I like this a lot. That's, that's quite something. Okay, so here's our instructions. Again, pretty standard for the infinite line. Yo, those are some big pieces, okay. Um, yeah, it looks pretty standard. What's not standard is the way that these bags are. So we have this... Whoa, I thought it was kind of a long skinny bag, but it's huge. What is the point of this? Bags within bags? So this is bag two. I guess, yeah, that's bag one. And then this is bag three. Wait a minute, so if we open this up... Whoa, I just hit my camera. What? I'm so confused. This seems like a waste of packaging. Like, a huge waste. There's, like, small bags in these big bags, but also loose parts in all of it. So once you open up all those, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven small bags, and then this whole pile of pieces. Maybe this is just me, but that feels incredibly wasteful. Like, we could have been fine with these parts stuck in some of these bags. Ah, that's kind of weird. Okay, then. We've got our big wheel pieces, our figures. Very cool. Um, oh, looks like the brick separator might have gotten a slight update. Interesting. So let me go ahead and build this and then we will take a closer look. And there we go, everything is all put together. And I gotta say, that was a surprisingly quick and easy build, but at the same time, it was very complex. Well, I guess I shouldn't say very complex. It was complex enough to be interesting, but not so complex that it was vexing to build. We do have a fairly large pile of extras. Got some extra shots for the turret. And I will say, while building this turret, uh, it's a bit of a pain because if you get the 
stand pushed too far into the gun, then the trigger for the gun will not go on. So you have to get it at this weird in-between position and it's kind of awkward. So that, that was the hardest part of the build, just getting that part right. Uh, other than that, the build went off without a hitch. So we're gonna go ahead and start with the figures and we are gonna jump right in with Fred. Here he is, Spartan Fred. It's been since the blue team set, I believe, since we've got Fred. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this is only the third variant of Fred we've ever gotten. And this guy is essentially the Halo Legends version remade, just with the color uh, turned upward like five notches. And he's lacking the stripes that the Halo Legends version had. And kind of the most disappointing part is the fact that his knives in his shoulders are not painted. I'm not sure why Mega decided to do that. I mean, it would have just been a little bit of silver. It's just kind of disappointing. Um, with that aside, though, the rest of the figure looks fantastic. Um, this blue is a very nice blue. I don't think we've ever had this blue before. It's kind of like sparkly it has a lot of the metallic flake in it um that does make it so that you'll have some variants in the blue like this leg is a little bit lighter than this leg because i think this leg has more of the flake in it um so that's that's really cool i like this uh color a lot i'd like to see it on more spartans as well um it almost appears as if he has a kind of metallic wash but he doesn't it's just the silver flake his weapon is an unpainted new style splazer, which I'm not sure we've gotten an unpainted one before. We got a painted one for the Series 11 Operator and then another one in the Master Chief Collection. But I think this might be the first unpainted version, which is great for customizing. These are fantastic pieces. There's so much detail. There's a ton of potential for painting. And it does have a spot for a laser if you have that piece. Most of this figure is the same as the Halo Infinite Chief. Um, just the shoulders and head are different. He has the 104 print on there, and then he's got some black, some black at the collar part as well. His visor is done quite nicely. Uh, there's some little like pieces sticking into the visor. It looks almost like shark teeth. Um, and those are surprisingly not painted over I kind of figured that even though the box showed them unpainted the spray would have just kind of been sloppy but no it's quite impressive you have a little bit of black here too now on the box it does show that around these little valves here um, there's a little gray line and there is none of that I don't know why they show that on the box that's a minor nitpick though. Overall, I'm very happy with this figure. I was not expecting to like him as much as I do. The knives thing is pretty disappointing, but not bad. Not bad at all. Definitely looking forward to getting the rest of the blue team. Now, I have a couple of the infinite chiefs here. I wanted to see which one matches Fred the best. I think I already know which one it's going to be. But here is the Warthog Rally Chief. Not bad. Definitely, whoa, come on, stand up. Definitely darker. And there's none of the metallic. So it makes him stand out a little bit. Not bad, though. And then we have the most recent Chief, Hail Hero Series 14 Chief. Uh, that's quite the contrast. Though, to be honest, it's not bad. The dark and the light like that. It's kind of cool. But I think the one that will match the most is the Halo Heroes Series 13 Chief. They're kind of the same general shade. Not not shade, same general... Yeah, yeah, shade. Um, kind of the lighter color. This Chief has a silver wash over him, so it kind of makes him match the shininess of Fred. I think these two look great side by side. It kind of definitely gives Halo Legends vibes, just how colorful they are. Um, and I'm interested to see if 
will end up getting Fred in a Halo Heroes series as well. And then we have Escherum. I think I'm pronouncing that right. And good grief, this guy could be taken as a Halo Heroes figure. That's how much detail he has. The weapon is definitely not Halo Heroes quality. It is just a all gray gravity hammer. Nice piece to get. Can't have too many gravity hammers. They're great pieces, but there is no print whatsoever. I think I might be wrong. Okay, no, it's the same torso, but the brute armor here is a brand new piece that works like a Spartan armor. Typically, the brute armor would slide down over the top like this kind of clamp, but this time, because Eshram's armor is so bulky, it is two halves that clip together like Spartan armor, and that is really cool. Um, we have a lot of print going on here. The head is a new mold. He's got a little beard that's painted, and then he has kind of a tan, I think it's the banish symbol on his forehead. It's kind of indistinct, uh, so it's hard to see. But they even got like the side of his face all scarred, and one eye is kind of more closed than the other because of the scars. Which, I that's really good. That's, that's not what I would have expected for a figure in a $20 set. He has these big, like, fin things. They're all molded with markings of some sort and then painted silver. He's got some red print on the chest. Shoulders have some silver. Then he has the blades here. He has the new three-fingered brute hands, which looks great. Nothing on the legs, no print on the legs, but he does use the old banished brute feet, which means he has no problem standing on studs. Around the back, some more very, very clean print. It just looks really, really good. Okay, let's give him his gravity hammer back. I was not expecting him to be in a set this size, either a larger set or Halo Heroes but not a medium-sized kind of $20 set like this. There he is next to Hyperius. Now, I'm a little bit worried that we're going to have another situation like we did with Hyperius, where we get a very good version of the figure, and then Halo Heroes comes along and we get another one. Um, I'm not sure how they could do Eshram better, because the head is already really good. I guess a better gravity hammer and then print for the legs. But I hope they don't do that. I don't like the fact that they made the first version of Hyperius kind of just super redundant and not worth anything. That was a little bit odd because he was one of the main draws for that set. So I'm hoping that they don't do that with Eshram, but we'll have to just wait and see. Right now, though, this figure is so good. I, I'm i blown away. It's beyond what I would have expected. Moving on to the builds, our first one is this little turret here. This one is one of the ones that actually shoots, so it does not have just the removable chain gun. Uh, and I'm all right with that. That's, it shoots well. Good grief, it came flying back at me. You get three shots, and you can see here... There's kind of a gap in between the peg and then the top of the gun. That is, like I was saying earlier, because if you push it too far, then the trigger will get stuck and you won't be able to shoot it. So that's kind of weird in the way they made it. But let's see, Fred should be able to hold it. Yes, that's a tall gun for a Spartan like that to be so short behind it. But that looks really good, actually. I like that. It's a nice little add-on. They didn't have to give us a turret like this, but they kind of went the extra step and gave us a little extra, and I really appreciate it. And finally, we come to the chopper itself. Now, I'm going to admit, I am not the biggest fan of the chopper design, just in general. Um, it's just not something that appeals to me at least just the way it's designed it's it's kind of an odd vehicle um the concept of it is really cool but i've never been a big fan of it i much prefer vehicles like the warthog 
but this is really really cool actually um the banished look i think fits this vehicle more than a lot of the other covenant vehicles because it's just such a brutal vehicle it's got these blades on the front um it's all sharp edges it's it's pretty cool looking i'm i'm, I'm liking it a lot more than i thought i would um, obviously you have the feature where you can have it turn like that. The one thing I did notice about that feature is that when you turn it, these little printed pieces here scrape the ground and then tend to pop off. So that's a little awkward. We have, I don't know if these are new pieces or not, but they're like these big blades and they have just a normal peg on there. So you could have a minifigure or I'm sorry, an action micro action figure hold it as a sword um, so that that's kind of cool got some guns up here printed pieces in the style of that from skiff hold on let me grab the skiff there we go i thought originally they reused pieces but they didn't so you can see it's the same kind of bullet and burn marks so that's pretty cool i like the fact that they're keeping it consistent the front you get this pillar of blue bricks to kind of keep it up in the air um because obviously it's not going to float like it should so we can do that very nice now i could be wrong but are these new are did they use these big giant blades on the older choppers or did they make a new one specifically for this one if you know please let me know down in the comments now this really surprised me. There is a little printed console on the back of this piece. It's kind of, the spray is a little messy on the edges, but the fact that it's there at all is fantastic. I really like that. I was not expecting it at all. It was just kind of there. I was building it and there it was. Let's go ahead and get Eshram on there. Oh, his leg is not wanting to bend. Wow, that's tight. So we just have some clips here for the handlebars. Oh, hey, that was actually pretty easy. Nice. Okay. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I'm. despite the fact that I'm not a big fan of the chopper in general, this is nice. I definitely think it... It really works, and Mega has done a good job recreating it. Real quick, there is a size comparison with the Warthog. They're generally the same length. The Warthog definitely has more bulk, but they're pretty close. And then you can roll this pretty well, actually. I was expecting it to slip a lot because those are hard plastic, but it doesn't. It rolls along very nicely, and I imagine that if you do this on carpet, it'll roll even better. Well, there you have it. That is the Chopper Takedown set. This set retails for $20, and I think that is a very fair price. The Warthog Rally set, which was similar in size, did have some more figures, had two more, and Mega pulled two of the figures out, and I think there's a few less pieces. And then gave us this set at $20. And I think that is very, very reasonable. Especially since we get two very important characters. Um, I'd say Eshram is probably the more important out of the two. Since we don't know Fred's involvement in Halo Infinite yet. But we do know that Eshram is quite involved. And may or may not be the main bad guy behind all of the Banished. Um, he definitely got... A little bit more care in terms of his print than Fred. Fred didn't get the knives printed. That feels very, very cost cutting measures. Like Mega decided to just slice that corner off and pretend they didn't need to do that. So that's kind of disappointing because the original Fred got the knives printed and it's just some silver. Like they all they had to do was blob some silver onto the handles and call it a day. So that's the major downside of the set for me at least uh another thing you could kind of see as a downside is for those of you who might want to army build the chopper you're going to end up with a whole army of freds and a whole army of eshrams which 
like you could use them for customs but it's also just kind of frustrating so that's a little bit of a toss-up you know getting the important figures in a cheaper set as opposed to wanting to army build the vehicle you know i'll take the important figures over having them in a massive set so overall highly recommend this set if you can find it go ahead and grab it and if you want a couple choppers go ahead and grab a couple of them just know you'll end up with an army of freds and an army of eshrams which might look a little awkward on your shelf thanks so much for watching if you enjoyed this video please leave a like and consider subscribing and i'll see you next time